So Dr. Wiese, thank you very much for making time to share your insights into the future of leadership. But before we walk into the future, can you tell us a little bit about your background? Where did you grow yes. up? Yes, I grew up in a small town on the edge of the Kalahari, but on the banks of the largest river in South Africa, which is called the Orange River, but its real name is the original Nama name, uh, which is the Hari, which means the big river. It was a small town with essentially two legs to its economic activities, uh, sheep farming and uh, irrigation farming along the river. Uh, small but very progressive town. A lot of people were poor in those days because it was pioneer country. It was really out in the sticks, as I said, on the edge of the Kalahari. And Dr. Wiese, can you tell us what was your dream career when you grew up? Well, when I was a little boy, I was fascinated uh, by the court of law because there was an element of drama around it. You know, that people would wear a robe and that somebody could sit in judgment and all the clever arguments advanced in court. So I always thought that I want a career uh, in the legal profession. And that's why I went to university and uh, graduated LLB and was then admitted to the Cape Bar to practice as an advocate. But mm -hmm. along the way, during my, during my university years, my family bought into a very small retail business called Pep Stores. And suddenly I changed my thinking and thought that the challenges in growing a business like that would give me much more satisfaction. And Dr. Wiese, um, can you tell us who inspired you in your early days? Well, I, I was fortunate enough to grow up in a home where both my parents uh, were in business. Uh, my dad had a, a garage, a petrol station, and he was a farmer. And my mother had her own business. Uh, so I could observe my parents hardworking, down-to-earth people, uh, community-oriented people. So essentially, my inspiration came from my home environment. But I also had teachers who were inspirational. And more importantly, I also had friends uh, who inspired me in terms of what they had done and had achieved. And Dr. Wiese, looking back over your career, would you say there was a major turning point where things could have gone different? Yes, I, I think all of us on our journey through life experience these turning points. Uh, in my case, uh, there were several. Uh, because I explained to you that I wanted to practice law, then I got excited about the world of commerce, uh, and then I went back to law, and at some point during the years at the bar, uh, I got exposed to diamond mining, which fascinated me. It was completely off my plan. And that's a point that I often make to young business people is that when you start out and you look at so-called successful people, you can often think, but that person must have had a blueprint how to get from A to Z. And business is not like that. Business is opportunistic. You've got to be in the arena. You've got to work very hard. And then the opportunities will come your way. In my case, a very successful diamond mining operation just happened to cross my path. And uh, 
That, that I've experienced many times in my life. And Dr. Wiese, can you tell us what is driving you today? Well, I suppose what's driving me is that I've always believed that I will live forever. And slowly one comes to the conclusion that that is just not going to happen. Uh, and what I've then decided when I reached what is considered to be the normal retirement age, I decided that uh, I'm not going to retire because to me that seems extremely boring. So, yeah, I suppose it's, uh, in a sense, I just don't want to accept that there's an end to it all. And I keep doing what I'm doing because I'm enjoying it. And I believe that in some small way, I'm making a contribution. And Dr. Wiese, looking into the future, what does the future of leadership mean to you? Well, I, I looked at that question and had a bit of difficulty getting my head around it. Uh, the future of leadership, I suppose, is equal to the past of leadership. Uh, I believe that leadership changes the world either for the better or for worse. But leadership uh, is, you know, a very important factor in society. And we know that the world is changing. Therefore, the way leadership leads will no doubt be changing also. But leadership is important. And Dr. Wiese, what have you learned from your own leadership journey that you consider most important for building future leaders? Well, the, the most important point for me, and that is how I grew up, and that was part of our business philosophy, is that you need a positive outlook on life. I often make the point that nobody has ever been able to explain to me what the benefit is of being negative, mm. of being pessimistic. We all know that the world is not a rose garden. There are enormous challenges, but there are enormous opportunities. And one has to approach these things with in a positive frame of mind. You know, if you look at entrepreneurs, to be an entrepreneur, you have to be a little bit mad. Because when you get up in the morning and you think of all the things that can go wrong today, over which you have no control, and which may destroy everything in a flash, it takes, it takes a particular personality to say, but I'm happy to run those risks. And I will go out there and try and make it for myself and for other people a little bit better. And Dr. Wiese, these are challenging times as the world is stumbling from one crisis into the next. What is your advice for future leader, leaders in terms of challenges? What challenges should they expect to encounter in their career? Well, let's start first of all by understanding that the world has always been a difficult place in fact i had a very interesting visitor a week ago he's the chief investment officer of one of the largest banks german as it happens in the world and he said and it, it really struck a chord with me that we're all very concerned at the moment because of everything that's happening around the world. You know, you know the problems Europe has. We've got a Ukrainian war. America is, by some estimates, engaged in a low-level civil war. We're all aware of these things, of cost of living, interest rates, inflation. 
But he made the point, the world is only returning to normal. We've had a few years when things were, were much calmer. Uh, now we're back in the turmoil, but turmoil is normal. Having said that, there is more than enough proof that the world today is in the best space that it be, had been in the history of mankind. For instance, the research shows that as a proportion of the world's population, today the lowest percentage of world population in the history of mankind is involved in armed conflict. We look at, you know, how life expectancy had increased. We look at the fact that today on one cell phone, you have more computing power than NASA had when it landed a man on the moon. I mean, these developments have been exponential. So the world is today, as I say, if you take one measure, just life expectancy, a 10 times better place than it was 100 years ago. So although there are all these challenges and turmoil, we've got to accept two things. Number one is that that is normal. And number two, we are, as a group, the human population, the best in the history of mankind. We're the best off. So there's no reason to be despondent. The challenges are there. And we just have to deal with it. Thank you. And Dr. Wiese, if you were to design a curriculum for future leaders, what are some of the skills you would want to factor in? Well, the, the obvious answer appears to be that, uh, you know, the future of development, if that's the correct word, uh, would be in the, will be in the hands of people who are uh, engineers, software engineers, people who really understand the digital age, of which I am not one. I mean, I struggle to, to fully utilize my mobile phone because I was trained as a lawyer and I grew up as a business person uh, dealing with people, developing people skills, that will remain important because at the end of the day, uh, it, the most important skill in my view is people skills because ultimately you have to work with people, be it in business or politics. And, and Dr. Wiese, as a mentor to future leaders, can you maybe share a success story or two where you mentored an upcoming leader and that person took your advice to heart? Yes, uh, you know, obviously I've been fortunate enough uh, with the colleagues that I had over my long career. Uh, I often think they mentored me as much as I mentored them. Uh, it is a two-way street. At one stage, the group that I controlled employed over 300,000 people around the world. And one of the most satisfying outcomes of that involvement for me, particularly in South Africa, was to see people grow beyond their wildest dreams. People who had very limited uh, futures before they got involved in our group, uh, how they grew. And the lesson from that, I think, uh, for me was, and I often articulated that to my colleagues, that the one thing you should never allow, you should never allow somebody else 
to draw your horizon, to say, because you were born here, or you're of a certain creed, or a certain religion, or a certain language group, therefore, you can only get up to that point, and not beyond. Um, that nobody must ever allow somebody else to do for them. They must draw their own horizons and accept that, you know, they can reach the stars. All right. And Dr. Wiesel, looking back over your leadership journey, are there any role models of leadership that you have encountered and would recommend future leaders should follow? I think the, the iconic uh, leadership models should be well known today to everybody who reads and studies history. And so, you know, in the various fields, uh, some of my role models are people, as I said before, that nobody else in terms of the wider public had ever heard of. Mm. But they were my role models. And although they didn't, you know, reach the heights on the international stages of the world, nonetheless, they were extremely important role models. And can you tell us, Dr. Wiese, where can our listeners follow you? Where can they follow me? Yes, if they wish to follow you, maybe on social media or on a website. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not on these Facebooks and whatever all these LinkedIn and mm -hmm. things are, but I do have this kind of interview from time to time uh, in print or on TV or on the radio. Uh, and, you know, I mean, everybody knows my address, I'm yeah. sure. So uh, and uh, there is no particular channel where they can follow me or Thank one you. particular yeah. And last but not least, Dr. Wiese, uh, what is your advice to the millions of learners out there who are looking to leave school to start a career? What is maybe one or two success factors that they should keep in mind? The overriding success factor, I often get this question. You know, what is the magic word And the magic word is a four-letter word. It is spelled W-O-R-K. If you are prepared to work and to understand that life is a trade-off, you cannot have everything. That, in my view, is the central lesson. Whatever you do, Just make up your mind. Understand that life does owe you something, but you've got to get off your backside and fetch it. And fetching it means you've got to work, apply yourself, and know that you will have to make sacrifices. I mean, all of us would like to spend more time with the family, more time with our friends, more time playing golf. It looks very attractive. But at the end of the day, you've got to make that trade. You can't have it all. Life doesn't work that way. Dr. Wiese, thank you so much for sharing your insights and your wisdom into the future of leadership and for inspiring so many future leaders. Danke, Dr. Emmett. It was nice chatting to you.